So when did I get switched to you? You were here to answer questions. what I do now? Same thing you've been doing since you were 12 years old. Yeah, I've been in the system since I was 12. You know how y'all keep your foot on a nigga's neck. You're keeping your foot on your own neck. We tell you all the time. Just be law-abiding. Can I tell you something? It's easy for you to be law-abiding. But it's a bitch when, as a kid, you got more roaches crawling out the cereal box than cereal. When your mother and your father both are junkies, you smoke your first joint at the age of 10, and your so-called aunt has sex with you at the same age. See, I've been sticking motherfuckers up since I was 11 years old just to survive. I dropped out of school in the eighth grade, so I can't read or write. I've been in and out of jail for the last 25 years, and now I got you and everybody else telling me, be law-abiding, get a decent job. I can't get a decent job because I don't know how to work. You think being locked up for half your life teaches you how to work, how to get along? It makes you a fucking animal. That's what it does. I'm a multiple convicted felon. This thing called crime, it's all I've known my entire life. Shit, jail, prison. It ain't nothing but a school for crime. Everybody I know is in jail. I don't know these cats out here on the street. All my friends is in jail, so in a way, I don't even mind going back because I know I can survive there, you know? Nigga be warm in the winter, got food to eat, a place to sleep. In order for me to do that on the outside, I got to do things I don't know how to do. So, I handle mine the best way I know how. I ain't never kill nobody, man. And I ain't never get caught with enough drugs to do a life sentence. So, like I said, while I'm out here, I'm do what the fuck I gotta do to survive. And if I get caught and get locked back up, then fuck it. That's just the way it gotta be. Davis don't fuck around either, she'll knock you. All you gotta do is get that bitch some coffee and she'll give you a break. That ain't no bullshit. She saw me in the streets once with my people who's after curfew. She told me to come out of office in the morning. I just knew I was going to jail. But she gave me a break. Made sure I brought that coffee though. I know heartaches seem to plague your days daily. And no one's teaching you the way. Open your eyes. What's this? I heard you have an attitude if you don't have your early morning coffee. Just want to start off good with you. Come on in here. Everybody sings us. I know 95% of prisoners are black and Latino. What you think about that? Well, what's the problem? You want me to take a piss test in the men's room and I tell them I'm a lady. I'm going to the ladies room, honey. I tell you what. You got 10 minutes to have an operation and cut that thing off. Now, if you come back and it's gone, then I'll let you use the ladies' room. If not, you're gonna take that test in the men's room or I'm gonna lock your lady ass up. And you feel like it'll never fade. Close your eyes. Stop, hold still. I told you not to run. You're going back home, Johnson. I'd do that again and you're definitely not going back. Officer Davis. Wait a minute. You were released last night. It's The bus gets in at 7 in the morning. You just now checking in? Oh, you must not want to be home. Hmm. All right, well, you got one hour to check in. Are you going back upstate? Mm-hmm.
Yo, P.O., come on, hurry up. I got business to handle. Come on. All right, I'm gonna grab a quick smoke. What the fuck you doing? Hold still! I fuck? said hold still! You believe this? Mm. Can't handle the outside. I got a um, very unusual but interesting request from upstairs. If it's overtime, I'm not interested. I'm not home enough as it is. No, 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 not overtime. A special assignment. Doing what? Teaching school. Teaching school? Mm hmm You'll have teacher's hours. You won't have to come here, check on the parole ladies plus. You will double your pay. Okay, for how long? The rest of the school year. Tell you what, why don't you come on in, sit in Big Daddy's chair, and I'll give you the deal. Well, the city has set up some alternative schools within certain high schools with behavior problems, which keeps the teachers from teaching and the students from learning. I mean, it's violence, drugs, gang, just flat out danger, right? Well, it's a new initiative to improve the schools as a whole and give the so-called bad kids a you know, chance to reform and learn. Listen to me, man, the dropout rate among black and Latino kids, it's 50%. Can you believe that? 50%? That means half the city kids out there don't have any damn diplomas. What we need is a benevolent white person who has the power to go to his brethren and say, listen, racism is wrong. Slavery is wrong. Yeah, they making noise, but you make a difference. Teaching whom? In the New York City school district, you know what kind of kids you're going to be dealing with? Can they be any rougher than the parolees I deal with? That's my basis? point. Why deal with more of it? You promised. After we got married, you would quit this job and go into sales with me. You're stressed, I'm stressed because you're stressed, and because of that, we can't have a baby. Oh, this isn't about that. It's Marcia, part and parcel okay? of everything, Jeff. Teaching's shorter hours. We could get them more often. Oh, then I get to hear about the horrors at school instead of the horrors at the parole office. Great. Why do you have to be so negative about my work? I don't criticize your family's rug business. You seem to think is the greatest job in the world. At least I get results. What results? I get paid for my productivity. What do you get? Fixed salary, 10 hours of overtime a week, and a hell of a lot of aggravation, which you bring home to me. Look, I know how much of a public servant you are. I just think you could be more productive. Now you mean make more money? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that, but money isn't everything, and it's not like I'm not making any. Jeff, you married me. And with that comes a little sacrifice. And I guess making more money is just a sacrifice you're going to have to make. I want a bigger house, and I want a child. And I want that child to be well taken care of. I, I want them to go to the best schools and summer camps and take vacations. I, I want a good life, and I don't want to worry about money. And you can't do that on a teacher's salary. Have you seen what these people make? Who can live on that? This is a lateral move. Going from parole to teaching is the same negative, stressful job. I'm gonna talk to my father about starting you off in sales. I don't want to work for your family, Marsha. You know, I thought discussing this with you was the decent thing to do. I had no idea you had no respect whatsoever for my career or other things I might want to do. This is not just about you. It's about us. And if your wife says she is unhappy, then you have to do something to make her happy or else you will lose her. Please, stop talking about yourself in the third person. Are you unhappy? For a while now. What are you saying? If you don't leave the parole division, I'm through. I can't take it anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me let me get this straight. She wants to leave you because you want to teach. Not only that, she wants me to leave the parole division too. Okay, listen, listen, Jeff. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm really, really sorry about what's going on in your marriage. I don't want to be coarse. But I need to know what the hell you're gonna do, okay? Because the city is waiting to see if they need to, to move forward if you deny. Then we'll talk about the whole parole thing. I'm taking the job. I don't care what she thinks. If she can't support me and what I want to do, let her leave. Definitive. That's good. Okay. Well, what about what about the parole thing? I'm keeping that too. You the man today. All right, good. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Brown. Have a seat. Thanks. Do you have any pet peeves? Uh, no, not particularly. 
Well, mine are my teachers being absent and coming in late. I know you have 10 days, but I don't even want you to take that. You know what I do, right? You teach reading, don't you? They didn't tell you? Tell me. Tell me what? All I'm interested in is if uh, you have a license, a file number, and a state certification. This says you have them all. You do have them, don't you? Yes, yes. I just uh, wanted to make sure you had my information correct. Good. Our school is one of the highest performing schools in the city. We have a 65% uh, graduation rate, which in this day and age is pretty damn good. Most schools have a 50% rate. The class we need you to teach is unusual, a challenge, and a pain in the ass. I call it unusual because we've been uh, instructed by the district to house, if you would, an alternative high school within the same building. This is the mayor and the chancellor's answer to overcrowding. The challenge is that you have a class of 12 students with low reading skills. They've all been arrested. None of them have done any time, but they're, they're on their way. That's why I call it a pain in the ass. They act obnoxious. They, they cause havoc in the schools. There have been three teachers teaching this class since school began, and they ran all three off. And it's only the third week of school. I hope you have better luck. So what do you say? You want to give it a shot? Yeah, sure. Why not? Check with our payroll secretary. She'll give you a, a time card, uh, payroll, and uh, insurance forms. You'll start work tomorrow, Friday, and you'll have the whole weekend to think about whether you want to teach or not. Our hours are 8.30 to 3 p.m., except for extended days when we have professional development or faculty meetings. Until then, it's till 5 o'clock. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, Mr. Brown asked me to stop by and get my time card, payroll, health insurance forms. I don't know. Yeah. You know, you got a real winning attitude, you know that? And you won't last a day here. Do you know that? I see why these schools are so messed up. Yeah. Go ain't nobody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the eyes so what's going on? I'm going to my parents. I called your office. They said you were at school. School! You didn't hear what I said. Or you didn't take me seriously. Marsha. Alan! Thanks for telling me that nobody at school was supposed to know I was on the job as a PO. Jeff, listen. Your wife called you looking for you and I had to tell the truth. Yeah, I heard. So what happened? She left me, Alan. What? Oh, Jeff, come on. Don't tell me that, man. I got home and she was uh, walking out the door with a suitcase in each hand. I asked her where she was going. She said she heard I went to school and she just drove off. This is surreal. My wife just left me out. Oh, man. I'm so sorry, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Hey. <clears throat> Don't you want to know how my meeting with the principal went today? Yeah, how many times do I have to tell you? Checking up on things is what I do. Hey, check up on when my wife's coming back to me, all right? Careful out there, my friend. I need a drink. Good morning, George Dell High. You are listening to WGDH, George Dell High Radio, 977 on your AM dial. This is Rafael Torres. That's right, I said it, you heard it. Now deal with it. We have the decorated president of the Parole Officers Union, Neville Glenn. Let's get right down to it. Why are there so many blacks and Latinos in our prisons, and what can we do to stop it? Well, a quick remedy is trying to get the family structure back together. So they don't look for love in all the wrong places. And if they have nothing to do, then they're gonna go out and find all kinds of things that are waiting for them like a trap. 
So it's up to us as responsible adults to give them a sense of identity and a knowledge of themselves. Teenage pregnancy is a large problem in our community. What can you say to our students about sex? It's been a long problem and a large problem for a long time. So we're trying to really address this issue of saying that only is the problem of fatherless boys a problem, but the fatherless women are leading a lot of young girls to not have any self-esteem. So they're looking at the TV and these images that are coming out, they're following them. So it's, a, it's very important for us men in the community and women to get together and show them that there's a way to actually be before they get to a certain age when they have no other choice but to be adults. A lot of teenagers want to be rap stars, movie stars, and athletes. They just want to be famous. What can you tell them about these desires and that they have a slim chance of getting these jobs and that there are other fields for them? Well, I wanted to be Marvin Gaye and Dr. J, but I realized there was enough people around me that made sure that I got the most that I could out of the education and they were mentors. And we have to be able to do some of the same thing for young people to be real people in front of their faces instead of having like the televisions raise them or the radios talk to them. My mother, Mrs. Glenn, always told me the same thing I tell my children today. Education will be with you for a long time, maybe a hundred years if you happen to live that long. Young people are only kids for 18 years and then it's very important to really enjoy that period of time. But it's our job to educate them, give them the proper tools because, you know, if they have a machine that's facing them, it's best to figure out how to take it apart and put it back together again with something that's handed to them. And you, you know, the best things in life are free. Thus is their education. See me posted under the street light. We be posted under the street light. We be posted under the street light. Morning, class. Say good morning, class. Uh, if you don't go ahead and take your seats, I'd uh, like to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Mr. Solomon. What in the world is going on in here? If you don't stop what you're doing and stay in your seats, I'm giving every one of you a pink slip and you're out of here. This is your fourth teacher this year. Your name, sir? Jeff. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Solomon is here to teach, not babysit you. Okay, just, uh, yeah, go ahead and settle back down, like, like that lady said, and you, you get a pink slip. Ed Jackson, math. <laughs> Robin Riley, science. Jeff Solomon, pleasure. <laughs> I haven't seen you around. Did you just start? Uh, yeah, first day today. Ah, what classes do you have? The alternative school upstairs. Oh. <laughs> so you're the new teacher, reading teacher. I feel for you. You ever taught any of these kids like that? Well, listen, let us educate you. Now go ahead, eat your lunch. We'll tell you a few things. For your survival. Now, the number one thing that you have to do in this system is what we call CYA. Cover your ass. Yeah, you see two students fighting? Don't even attempt to break them up. No, you call school safety. I know, it doesn't really make any sense. Two kids are trying to kill each other and you're right there to stop them. But let me tell you, if you grab a kid and the other kid hits that kid mm. while you're holding them and hurts them, you're liable. Now, never find yourself alone with a student in the classroom with the door closed. Now, don't touch a student, don't. Hit a kid, don't grab a kid. And if one of those clowns give you a problem, just call the dean. Don't even attempt to deal with it. Now, make sure you write everything up. You've got to document all the problems you encounter to cover, cover your, your ass. ass. Don't worry if you can't teach them. These kids are so screwed up, their problems began long before you. All they want you to do is babysit them. 
they just need somebody in there to be with them to somewhat control them. Now, just give them some work to do and don't let them go to the bathroom or you will never see that kid for the rest of the period. <laughs> They'll just walk the halls and the assistant principals will come down on you. Oh, have you met assistant principal Gentry yet? Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a piece of work. Listen, stay away from that woman. She is the kiss of death. Now, I have seen her get rid of a lot of teachers over the years that she didn't like. It doesn't matter if you can teach or not. She's just got a bug up her ass. You need any supplies? You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> a check for $200, they call teacher's choice. You'll get around Christmas. Mm -hmm. You spend anything over that, it's coming out of your own pocket. <laughs> I hope we didn't scare you off. We've got to... Stop. Where's your hall pass? Where is your hall pass? Get back in the class. Always in the hallways, every day with you. Get in the class. You have a seat. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm Gloria Howard. I'm the dean. Hi, Jeff Solomon. New English teacher class 804, right? That's right. Oh, good thing I saw you. I just wanted to give you a couple of pointers. When you have problems with your students, which you will have with that class, the protocol is to talk to the student about his or her inappropriate behavior. If they misbehave again, you call the parent. If there's still a problem, then you have the parent come to the school. And if there's still a problem after that, that's when you call me. What's been your experience with the class thus far? Havoc. We wish they weren't here. And what about the parents? Let's just say your best bet is to follow the rules I stated. Okay, and good luck to you, and only call me if it's something really, really serious. And uh, what do you consider really serious? A student that threatens you or causes you bodily harm. All right. All right, well, good luck to you, okay? Thanks. One day our eyes won't see race or social status. I feel the as one will stay. And one day our hearts will be full of true unselfish love. I just gotta get my coat and my bags down the front. Where's that? Oh, he went to the store for me. He should be back any second. You see what happened, son? After you married 30 years, they got your time to the second. <laughs> Did you get the plastic plates I asked you to get? Yeah. Kevin, you know I can't stand eating out no paper plates. Oh, I need to go on with your business now. Those people don't care what type of place they're eating on as long as there's something on the plate. I've been going through this 25. 24 years. I was 21 when I married you. Don't make me a year older. You were 25 when we adopted Jeff. Come on, son, let's go. Hey, I'll be right back, Dad. I need to talk to you. Hmm? Over here. Over here. Marsha called me. She told me what she did. She called you too, huh? Son, I can't advise you. Because we always taught you to choose a career based on your passion. You can't hide from who you are. You remember, you are somebody. A teacher. What in the world made you want to go into that? Well, the city's short on teachers, particularly in schools with predominantly black and Latino students. When my supervisor came to me, knowing how much I believe in public service, he told me that the education department is getting together with the parole division and they are- They're gonna give them an education? help eliminate the chances of them getting involved in crime. Well, you did take those education courses. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't help me one bit today, Dad. And <laughs> you're an ex-teacher in the system. You gotta help me. I, I was lost out there. Those kids had their way with me. I almost cuffed them. <laughs> don't, don't do that. They just threw you to the wolves. That's the system for you. You see, it's too big, Mandy. Anybody to hold your hand, let you feel your way through. You have to be proactive 
That's what the city is depending on from its teachers. You see, when I... I've got to uh, go over to Crown Trophies, pick up some awards for your mother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, can you come over for dinner huh? tomorrow, maybe about six? Walk you through it? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right, hey, and uh, Marsha won't be with me. She, uh, she left me. I heard she'll be back. Okay, close. Hmm? See, what you're talking about is basic classroom management. The theory in college on how to manage a class sounds good. Makes sense for children who've had basic family training on how to behave properly. But too many of our children simply don't know how to behave. Either the parents weren't there for them, or they didn't know what to do. It's just a vicious cycle. It's just the way it is. So you have to meet them on their terms. You gotta break them down first. Then you build them up. Mm -hmm. Which means, Monday, listen, you wait about two minutes to after the bell rings before you begin your class. Then you walk in and the first thing you do is act like you lost your natural mind. Just scream at the top of your lungs, everybody sit the hell down. Now, they're going to cuss you, but you just ignore that. Say again. I said, sit the hell down. Then you tell them, anybody that doesn't want to be here, you're free to leave. But if you leave, the penalty's a pink slip. Oh, well, now you have the bulk of their attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, there's going to be a few that's going to test you. Right. If they're eating, drinking, uh, got headphones on. Hats, do-rags. Just snatch every one of those items from them with force. And if they get physical, handle your business. Mm, show them what you're working with. Anybody who doesn't want to be here. Get out. But if you leave, the penalty is a pink slip. Attention. Tell them what you expect from them from now on. Threaten them. Mm. Use that old gun line I told you I used to use on those real tough guys. Remember that? Use it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get them. <laughs> he used that line on a few people. I know. From now on, whenever you come to my class, there's no eating. There's no horseplay, there's no listening to music, there is nothing but sitting in your seats and preparing to learn. Take off those hats. Yo, you better watch your back, B. Word. Cause we ain't done with you yet. You got an ass whooping coming, yo. Well, I hope you're bringing your gun, cause I'm bringing mine. Oh! You ain't got no ink on like that? What kind of teacher you threatening students, man? The kind that will kick your ass if you threaten me. I'm not afraid of you. Mm-hmm. Now either you let me teach 
or I'm handing out the pink slips. Fooling around with those kids. I'm not afraid of anybody in here. If any one of you interrupts my teaching, that means that neither you nor the other students can learn. And I am not having it. You will get a pink slip. Everything you told me worked. That's experience, baby. Here, your father wants to say something to you. <laughs> hey, man, if you need any more help, just give us a call, rookie. <laughs> you know I will. Thanks a lot. Aside from being a parent, teaching is the most important thing that you can do. Okay. Jeff, I'll talk to you later. Right, Bye, son. All right. Yeah. Wait till we find out how far behind those students of his really are. He's in for a rude awakening. Yes, he is. A very rude awakening. You know what I was thinking about telling him? What's that? Don't listen to your father. He's sold out. He's teaching in Westchester. Shoot, girl. All the hell I caught in New York City public school system. Westchester offered, what, 30,000 more? Mm -hmm. You damn right I transferred. Mm -hmm. Besides, Jeff, he's the right age to deal with them knuckleheads. Mm -hmm. I did my time. I served. He's still teaching in Westchester. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but everything I told him was the truth uh, from experience, huh? Hey, you got your nerve. I should have told him about you. What? You taught the fourth grade, acting like you taught some tough kids. <laughs> I keep telling you that's when it all starts. Cussing, yeah. fighting, talking back. Yeah. Shoot. Hey, you talking about you, sir? You sound like you were in the military. Well, nothing in the military could be worse than some of the schools I taught at, except getting shot at in some of those schools that could happen too. Are you kidding? And don't forget, girl, you haven't been in the classroom for over five years, huh? Sitting up there in the district office. Well, those parents better be glad I'm down there. Otherwise, it'd be more kids railroaded, put into even lower performance schools, and. He wouldn't stand a chance in this society. Mm -hmm. Well, still a cushion job. You better watch your mouth or you ain't gonna get nothing tonight. Oh, I am. No. I bet you I'll get me something. Mm, I can't believe we didn't have no biological kids. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do today is go around the room and have each one of you introduce yourselves. At the same time, I will take attendance. We'll start with Lahab. Lahad Mullins. Stupid. <laughs> Shut up. Jermaine Murray. He's gay. Hey, sweetness. <laughs> Quincy Ross. Anthony Trailer. Next person. Shamel James. Lee Taylor. Trevani Jones. Darius Nelson. Russell Banks. Bo Scott. Jamal. Next. Oh, what are you talking? Elijah Reynolds. All right. I will work to learn your names as quickly as possible. In the meantime, if you'd all please take out this reader. Today we're gonna go around the room and each one of you is gonna read aloud. I wanna get a sense of where each one of you are. Please open to page one. Once again, we'll start with Lahab. In Oklahoma, the juice if every moving thing they came in a them the cold pulled to him the, the wine passed past it half a to mean located Oop, the tracker, the track where I'm angry. 
in the lot afternoon but by the uh, not enough a moment. I'll give you a minute. I just wanted to tell you that new reading teacher doesn't have a clue on what he's doing and you'll have me up there covering that class in no time. What is he doing? Well, corporal punishment for one. Come with me to my office, Mr. Hoffman. I want to hear about this. Excuse me. You just can't come in here. You need to have an appointment, or he has to call for you. Sir, didn't I tell you not to come in here? You can't tell me anything, Missy. Mr. Brown, he just walked right past me. It's okay, Mrs. Harris. I need to talk to uh, Mr. Sullivan. Okay, I'll call my secretary tomorrow. Yes, thank you. That lady needs a vacation. Sometimes the pressures of the job bring out the worst in people. But don't worry about it, okay? Uh, I'm surprised I didn't see you yesterday. Tell me, uh, no good. I quit. I didn't hear from you. I was, I said, great. I got a teacher to teach another day. Take over this class. How did it go? Uh, challenging, to say the least. I warned you. They were a handful. So? job is yours if you want it. Yes, I want it. You don't have to decide now. You don't have to commit. There's still time to try and find another uh, position within the system. You're sure? I mean, if you want to try a traditional high school... No, I'm going to plant my feet right here. Good. Your supervisor is Assistant Principal Gentry. Anything you need, anything you want to talk about, just see her. Um, by the way, she wants to see you before you leave today. Okay, Mr. Brown, there's a few things I want to ask you. <laughs> Whatever it is, please. Just tell Mrs. Gentry, and uh, she's your supervisor, and she'll take care of everything. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Solomon, please, have a seat. Is hitting students one of your class management tactics? What? Several of your students from your reading class told me that you hit three students. Don't you know you can be arrested for that? And most definitely fired. I'm gonna have to write it up and put it in your file. If it happens again, I will see to it personally that you lose your job. Understand, Mr. Solomon? I understand. May I ask you a few questions? Certainly. Why are there only boys in my class? Why are there only 12 of them? Are they special ed? No. That's not a special education class. Those boys are there because it's part of the mission statement for that school. Those boys are too socially maladjusted to be around girls and learn. As far as the class size, it's, uh, it gives them more individual attention. Thank you, Ms. Gentry. I'm clear on a number of things now. I hope we're clear on you keeping your hands to yourself. I got it. Thanks. Not that you can go about your business and affect nobody else. But every little thing you do impacts on me just like it does to say. Oh. Welcome to the human race. One big family. Alan, I was checking on Diggs, he was out past his curfew, and he was standing there talking to my students. What, what damn students? The students, the students you got me teaching. Damn, um, okay, did, did they make you? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, all right, that's good, that's good. I'll tell you what, just let it pass, okay? I mean, you're gonna catch up doing something wrong soon. What about the kids? What about them? How can I teach kids that I run into on the job? Listen, J Jeff, 
you're a big boy, okay? Him a big old, big old boy. And him professional, too. And him going to figure it out. Bye-bye. Giovanni, you know what a noun is? No, I don't feel like knowing what a noun is. I only know about a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you know what a verb is? Nah, but I know what a verb is. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, do you know what an adverb is? Man, of course, man, no doubt. You're okay, Pinocchio. Good, good, what is it? <laughs> Quincy. Do you know what a pronoun is? It's like a noun. Okay, good, close. Everyone write the following in your notebooks. Pens? Pen, 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 pen. Anybody else? Good. A sentence. is a group of words expressing a complete thought. The old tree in the front yard is not a complete thought. The old tree in the front yard is still standing, is a complete thought. The first phrase, not a sentence. The whole phrase is a sentence. All right? Everybody number your papers from 1 to 20. Pass these pages back. On the pages, you will find 20 phrases. If you believe the phrase to be a sentence, write a big S next to it. If you believe the phrase is not a sentence, write a big N-S next to it. It's not gonna take long. I know you gotta teach. Drive around the block. You're not going to school today? No, I can't. I got, got something I gotta handle. Being president. Drive around the block. Bunch of robberies going on around here. I heard last night at the neighborhood watch meeting, Matthew Steffens, you know, our treasurer, he got clipped for five thousand dollars. Yeah, man, that's the money we were saving to get our little league baseball uniforms, you know, shoes and shit. He also broke into uh, Philip Foster and Eldon Harris's homes. Got them each for two grand. When did it happen? Well, it had to have been sometime yesterday during the day because. All three of them said that the money was there when they left the house that morning. Now, believe me, all three of those guys watch every penny they ever made. Drive me crazy with that. They also get, uh, um, what's it, uh, Linda, Linda Shavers. Mm -hmm. Why are we here? If the clock on our block, they've seen your mother leave, now me. I think the course is clear for them to hit us. And if that happens, you call the police. Why do you need me? No, I'm not call the police. No, 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 no. Come on in this neighborhood. Jeff, don't act like you don't know how long it takes the police to react to a robbery. If it's not a shooting, they take their time. No, no, I need you here to arrest them on the spot, in the act. I have to get to class. I don't have time to be on a stakeout with you and be Crockett and Tubbs. Well, get out of here. Will you stop being such a schmuck, huh? You stop being a man, I'll stop being a schmuck. Well, you just drive up, drive around the block, go back around the block. Come on, these guys work fast. You know how it goes. Come on. Come on, pull out. Okay. All right. Hey. Let's do this. It'll make you happy. Let's do it.
All right, Poppy, let's go up there. Cool. You got bullets? Huh? Do I have bullets? Yeah. Did you ask? Yes, I have bullets. Well, what can I, I need? Like, hey, anything, anything happens bullets. to you, up your mother will have me on a plate. I'm a Let's go. Easy, easy, easy. You what? wait here. What? Shad. What are you talking about? Ride shotgun on this one. I'm going to go in. I'm going to clear out the house before you go in there. All right. We'll be careful. I will. I'll be careful. What are you talking about? You sure you got bullets? I got bullets. Okay. No, wait, wait, Dad. They're long gone. I gotta get to school. Aren't you law enforcement first and then a teacher? That's a good question. No. just in case anything goes down. Did you see who was chasing us? Nah, did you? Nah, but we lost him quick. When I turned to look, he was nowhere around. Don't worry about it. We're cool, B. Go on, get going. It's on this afternoon what we're rolling tonight. Nah. It's too hot right now. So we'll chill for a couple of days. I'll holler. Class, sorry I'm late. I've marked your papers, and I gotta tell you, they're not good. Every one of you needs work. I know this is an eight plus class, which means each one of you has failed the eighth grade at least twice. You're all at least 17 years old, high school age. I also know that you're all on probation. Just throwing rocks at prison. So what I'm gonna do since you all know so much about crime, is I'm gonna teach you your way. You're here, you may as well learn. Look underneath the surface. There's a lot more than meets the eye. Read between the rocks. Read between the rocks. Did it take for PD to get here? Oh, about forever. That's how long. Well, they said they're gonna have constant surveillance on the block. <laughs> Need a plea. Yeah, that's what they said. Dad, you stay out of this. Let the police handle it. We had them, Jeff. Let it go, Pop. We weren't in a position to arrest those guys. They'll have their day. Yeah, in the meantime, they rob us blind, huh? I'm sorry I reached out to you. Next time I'll, you know, I'll, I'll handle it myself. How's school coming? Well, that seems to be the only thing that you're thinking about these days. I had a fantastic day today. Really? What'd you do? Yeah, Mom, it was the first day I had complete control of the class, and they were working. 
Oh, that's really great, yeah. What'd you do? Well, they can't read. And uh, for the first few days, I really had trouble reaching those kids. And today, when I discovered that they don't even know the alphabet, it came to me. You have to give them something relative. So what'd you come up with? Gave them a learning activity to make a list of vocabulary words dealing with criminality. Uh, dealing with criminality? <laughs> Yeah, they know about that. <laughs> that sounds innovative to me, baby. I got their attention. I got them writing. Tomorrow, I'll give them the definitions. All right. I see where you're going with this, and I like it. However you can get those kids to reading, do it. Screw that antiquated and culturally biased curriculum. Outside of cheating, I'm for anything that'll teach those kids to read and to pass the test. And while I'm on the subject of the test, let me break it down like this. Last year, there was a question on the test that asked, what shape is a pillar? Circular, square, vertical, horizontal? Now, 100% of the kids live in public housing or apartments. Pillars hold up big houses. They don't know what pillars are. And more importantly, they didn't teach them about pillars. Don't get me started. Well, don't get started. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, I'll catch you later. Where you going, Kev? Emergency meeting. I gotta safeguard those burglaries. Bring back a jar of mustard, please. Mustard. So, Jeff, look, when the time is right, you should bring your class by here one day for a meal. Yeah. When they see your background and who your relatives are, it's gonna change the way that they see you. Feed them some greens and some fried chicken. Mm. They'll love you for it. Wow, Mr. Solomon, this is the first day you're on time. Oh, you're clocking me now. Okay. Everybody settle down. Sit down. I want to go ahead and get started. Now, don't write anything down yet. I just want to talk to you. I want to ask you a few questions. Appeal is the process of asking a higher court to review the decision of a trial court. Anybody know what that means? Wow, very good. Everybody take out the papers on which you wrote or should have written the words from yesterday. Good. To appeal is a verb. A verb is a word that expresses action, existence, or occurrence. Take the okay, guys, there is. Hot sauce, soy sauce, duck sauce, and soda in the bags. Yo, Mr. Solomon, why you care so much about us black kids? What do you mean? I mean, you white and all. Why you care so much? Yeah, I never had a white teacher care so much. Have you ever had a black teacher? Yeah, a woman, but never a black man. Y you have your ethnic heritage, as well as your human one. It's your job to bring the two together in ways that fit your individual goals. What in the hell does that mean? It means you need to feel like you're not only part of the community from which you come, but also the city, the nation, and the world. Man, that don't mean nothing. White people still gonna act racist towards us. And my answer to that is, so what? You do the right thing, and you will achieve. Look how far black people have come since slavery. Can you guys imagine being slaves? No. No, I didn't think so. Now, I'm Jewish. Shalom. Yeah, see, I say shalom, you say shalom. 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 Very good. Now, my people have been through a lot of discrimination also, including slavery and racial hatred right here in the United States. And we did the same thing that blacks did. We fought it. With what? Education. The power of knowledge. Nobody can take that away from you. Blacks went through the civil rights movement, and it didn't knock out racism. Well, the only thing that was knocked out in the civil rights movement were the Jim Crow laws, which was basically America's version of segregation and apartheid. Not racism. Racism is a concept and it is taught, but it can be untaught. If the civil rights movement got rid of segregation, then how come this school is all black? It's a good question, Quincy. Because people still don't see the human race as one, and people want to live around others who look like themselves, and then because of housing discrimination, which basically means that blacks can only really live in certain areas. 
and the neighborhood is black, and therefore the school is all black. In a nutshell, housing discrimination leads to segregated schools. Look, I can't speak for all white people any more than you can speak for all black people. I see myself as a person, and I see you as one, and I, I judge people on an individual basis. Every white person is not a racist. You know, every white person is not waking up in the morning and thinking, well, I wonder what I can do to make life miserable for black people. Forget about race. It'll only hold you back. Know your history, your heritage, where you come from, because it's the only way you're going to know where you're headed. But you can't use your past as a crutch. It just makes you so angry that you can't progress. You got to use it as motivation. Fear no one. Respect everyone. But if each one of you graduates from high school, goes on to college or a good job, you will become 12 more young black men who nobody gave a chance to, who become productive members of the human family. It's that individual happiness that can bring about world peace. But say you don't graduate high school and uh, you're out on the streets and you're hustling because, hey, we all need money, right? Yeah. Then you will go to jail which is nothing but a school for crime. And you will become part of that family where they don't treat you like a human being, they treat you more like a caged animal. And you wanna talk about slavery? That's the new slavery for black people in America. Yeah, you kinda of deep, yo. Where'd you learn all this? Hi, Mom. I'd like to bring my class over for dinner tonight. Yeah, an early one, maybe six? Sounds good, thanks, Mom. You too, bye. Guys, I'd like to take you to my parents' house tonight for dinner. What? Yeah. How you gonna put all 12 of us in your car? You got a van or something? Actually, I do. You guys are gonna love it. Now, it'd be great if you could all make it. Uh, maybe meet out front at about 5.30. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make it extra credit. Think of it like a field trip, but with really good food. Yeah. All right? Two more robberies within a six block radius of each other. The police always just miss them. I tell you, Jeff, we should have got them when we had them. Come on, Pop, don't bring that up again. Well, what are you talking about? Come on. Everybody is on my case because of my position. You should be communicating with more with the police, they say. Well, the police, they know what they look like. They know the robberies are happening in our district. I talk to the police every day. What the hell do they want from me? But what's the description? Well, that one is significantly older than the other. Of course, yeah, you know that they are black. I mean, you were able to determine that much, weren't you? Come on, Pop, I'm not going to go there. All right, OK, again, OK, 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 OK. Thanks for having us over. Let's make sure they don't steal nothing. Oh, oh I get it. Mm. Anita, what's going on? I thought this was just us. This is a long story. Work with me, Marsha. Come on in. Well, I'm gay, and my parents don't accept me, so I live with my aunt. Well, that's all right, as long as you have a place to live. So are any of your fathers in jail like some of your other classmates? Miss, all of our fathers are in jail, except the Hobbs. Man, I never met my father. Well, I was married to Kevin when I was 21 years old. I just graduated college, began my first year of teaching. He was in his third year also teaching. We were living in a room in my aunt's house. And at my school, there was this English teacher her name was Julia Solomon, and she was married to a police officer. His name was Herman Solomon. And her and I became very, very close. One day we were talking, and I told her we were tired of living in a room, 
and were looking to move into an apartment in a two-family house. Just so happened she owned a two-family house and was looking for a tenant. So we moved right in. Everything was just wonderful. We would drive to school together. We became very, very tight. One day, Julia and Herman were driving back from the Catskills Mountains, ending their summer vacation with their newborn son, Jeff, your teacher. He was exactly one years old. It had started to rain terribly just as they reached the Bronx. And as they drove on the Grand Concourse, speeding car ran a red light, crashed right into Julia and Herman's car, killed Herman instantly. Julia was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Miraculously, little Jeff was unharmed. And Julia and Herman were both the only childs in their family, and both their parents had passed. So I rushed to the hospital. And as I arrived, I saw a priest and a social worker right next to Julia's bedside. I leaned in to kiss Julia. She grabbed me and she said, I want you to raise Jeff. You and Kevin adopt him as your son. She mustered up just enough strength to sign a document stating that fact. And then she passed. And from that day, we raised Jeff as our own son into his manhood. Yo, you raised him black? I mean, how he know so much black stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, we raised him to be a human being. But I know what you're talking about. See, Jeff was born white and Jewish. But we made sure he knew about his religion, his history his culture. And of course, coming up around us and our family, he couldn't help but learn about our culture. See, it's like my wife says. We tried to raise Jeff to be a good and caring person. It doesn't matter where as a kid in life you start out. You know, some people have better circumstances. You have a better start. But where are you by the time you reach adult age? Hmm? Well, Will you be able to take care of yourself? Help raise a family legally? Hmm? What kind of human being are you? Yeah, what kind of friend? What kind of uh, co-worker? Hmm? What kind of parent will you be? <laughs> I know you have to leave, but let me leave you with this. Instead of blaming the white man or society at large, you know, Start trying to figure out a way to help yourself up. You know, just like our forefathers did. Your students really seem to like you. I don't know, I'm just doing the best job I can. You never know, any of these kids could end up locked up tomorrow, and whoever's putting effort into them would be really disappointed. It seems to me like you're the only one putting effort in. Well. They seem really touched by your story. Yeah. I hadn't heard that story since I told you. Well, you know Anita set this up, so I won't blow your cover. I'll wait till you leave, and then I'll leave after. Thanks. Marshall, will you go to show with me tomorrow? Since when are you interested in going to show? I want to do whatever it takes to fix our marriage. And I know that's something you want us to do more of. I don't know. Come on, it'll be good to get back in there. I'll, I'll come by, I'll pick you up, we'll walk over together. Okay, but I, I'll meet you there. Oh, Marsha, that's ridiculous. That's the way I Let's want go. it. Where were you last night? I was at my teacher's mom and pop's house with the whole class over for dinner. Is your teacher white? Yeah, but he's cool. Cool? What I tell you about fucking with them crackers? You a nigga. You understand me? And in their eyes, you always gonna be a nigga. Don't do that shit no more, Jamal. 
You seriously fucking with my paper. I don't do this shit no more. What'd you say? I'm out. Oh shit, somebody got knocked out. <laughs> Yo, that's Jamal, yo. Yo, your niggas was with Jamal in that cracker last night? You know y'all seriously fucked up my paper, don't you? But that's all right, you're gonna make up for it tonight. Y'all fuck around and miss one more time we supposed to get busy, I'm shaking all y'all niggas. Yo, man, what happened to Jamal? I knocked his ass out, that's what the fuck happened to him. After we get what we supposed to get tonight, y'all ain't getting shit for missing last night. Damn. Pick his ass up. We're gonna go rob your teacher's mom's and pop's crib tonight. Well, whatever he's doing, he's doing it good because PD haven't knocked him yet. I tell you what, um, when you see him in the morning, don't violate him unless he's, he's you and dirty, okay? We gotta make sure we don't blow your cover. What about my kid running with him? Mm. PD gets him before we do. He, he get in the business, man. And we get digs and he's with him? If he involved, he getting charged. Come on, Jeff, what the hell you want me to do, man? Not blowing your cover is helping you, it's helping us, it's helping the city, not him. He's a criminal. Okay, the only thing I'm doing is allowing him a little prolonged freedom. That's it. Damn. Man, they got a house full of people up in there tonight, man. Hell yeah. It ain't no good. Damn. We'll come man. back. No, no, we'll come back. Shabbat shalom. Jeffrey, Marsha, how's my favorite young couple? Great, oh, wow. thank you, thank Rabbi. You. Lovely service. Let me have your hands. I have a prayer or a blessing, a brooker of a thousand mitzvahs for you both. Life goes so fast. Jobs come and go, but marriage is forever. And as the years go on, you'll look back at the family you've created right now, and you'll know nothing else in this world matters. Mazel tov, gazai gazun. And don't be a stranger, come back again. I've forgotten how soothing Rabbi Schwartz would be. <laughs> Everything you said really hit home. Yes, he's a wonderful man. We should come every Sabbath. Yeah, it'd be good for us. Us? Did you say us was that? Yes, I said us. <laughs> passionate you were about helping people less fortunate than us. I didn't realize that till last night. Go home together? Yeah, let's go home. to discuss with you. What's the problem? Starting with you buying a meal for the students. Is there a law against that? There is a rule against it. Nobody made me aware of it. Now you know. You also brought the students to your home for a meal. Is there a rule against that also? Yes. Anything taking place out of the building, the students need permission slips signed by their parents to attend. Anything else? Yes, I understand that you have been teaching outside of the standard curriculum and that you have created some ridiculous curriculum of your own. What is it? Um, teaching reading through criminality books and vocabulary lists? <laughs> I've never heard anything so outrageous in my life. Well, since you asked me so nicely, I'll tell you. <laughs> When I was in school and ever since, I know for a fact teachers treat their students to pizza parties, cake and cookie parties, soda parties, you name it. The reason I do it is to treat these kids like human beings. 
and to show them they are special and cared about. You think these kids care about you? <laughs> they are using you. They're manipulative. These are tough street kids. You don't know how they are working you. Well, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to relate to them, and that's something you'll never be able to do. I beg your pardon, but it sounds like you're saying that because I'm white, I can't relate to these kids? To be honest with you, yes. I've seen white teachers come in here and think that they are saviors. They're gonna save all the little black kids, and you know what? Those students run them right out of here because of disappointment after disappointment. Your job is to teach them to read, period. Not to try and be a parent to them. It's the racist attitude that you have that's the problem. You don't know my background. You don't know anything about me. You've been sitting behind this desk for too long to realize what is really going on with those kids. As a matter of fact, that's probably why you got into administration in the first place, isn't it? Because you couldn't hack it as a teacher. Oh, you being black and you still couldn't relate to and manage those kids. You know, you strike me as the type of person who would call these kids animals and all sorts of names that won't even get into right now. And you want to tell me that because I'm white, I can't relate to them? You're fake. The only reason you do your job is for the paycheck. You're stuck. You can't do anything else with your life now. But you know, I was going... I was going to tell you what my strategy is, but now I see that would be a complete waste of time because you only want your school to be quiet and have no incidents with your teachers so you don't get called out on the carpet. You're covering your own ass and you do not give a damn about those kids. I'm gonna have to give your nephew a three-day suspension. I don't have time for this bullshit. I need to speak to the principal right now. He's in a meeting with a parent right now. You can't see him. I told you, you would have to make an appointment. Mr. Solomon, I'm in a meeting. Mr. Brown, I need to talk to you right now. I'm sorry, miss, but this is important. Calm down, Mr. Solomon. I'll talk to you as soon as I'm finished. No, we're gonna talk right now. Your assistant principal threatened my job. I have a parent here. Good, she needs to hear this. The whole school needs to hear this. If you don't calm down, Mr. Solomon, I'm gonna have you removed. I don't wanna have to call school safety. Oh. Miss Gentry has no right to threaten my job. Those kids are learning how to read. I'm reaching them the way no teacher ever has, and she's trying to take that away from them, and there is no way that I'm gonna let that happen. There's a time and a place to discuss that, Mr. Solomon. Yeah, the time is right now. Miss Jones, your nephew can come back in school in three days. I'm really sorry about this. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Mr. It Brown. wasn't even me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Be a good boy. Mr. Brown, this man? is not equipped to teach school. He wants to do things his way. Oh, and whose way am I supposed to do things? I have never been so disrespected in all my time oh, here. Oh, please, you insulted me. OK, folks, let's calm down. I mean, we're not going to get anywhere this way. Mr. Solomon, you want to talk? Let's talk. Miss Gentry, you're first. I called Mr. Solomon into my office to discuss some of the things that you and I discussed, Mr. Brown, concerning some of the maladies in relations to his students, concerning his methods of teaching reading. And he called me a racist, among many other insults. Mr. Solomon, did you call Miss Gentry a racist? This lady said that because I'm white, I can't relate to those students. That is a racist statement. My name is Miss Gentry. And I never said such a thing. Oh, I'm lying about that? I did not say okay, that. Okay, with all due respect, I see where this is going. I just want to ask you one simple question. Do you want me to teach that class or not? That depends on whether you're going to teach the standard curriculum and not engage in the extracurricular stuff. 
Can you assure me of that? Don't you see that you need teachers that are creative and innovative? I don't give a damn what color their skin is if they're getting through to the students. That's the important thing. Breaking bread is a spiritual experience. It creates intimacy and passion between people. And these kids don't get nearly enough of that. They got low self-esteem. I'm building that up, and that's how I've got them reading. Your antiquated methods are not going to work for these inner city kids. So how would you know what methods it would take to deal with these inner city kids? These are real thugs. Have you ever dealt with real thugs before? I can tell. No. These kids are on probation. And it just seems to me that they're having a whole lot of fun, and that is where they are working you. These kids will not pass that standard test. So your innovative methods are going to mean absolutely nothing. So this curriculum, this standard curriculum you're so crazy about, is that the same one that has my kids in the eighth grade for the third time at 17 years old? Mr. Solomon, can you assure me that you will follow the curriculum until the end of the term? No. What if I can't? Well, I would ask for your resignation. Guarantee you an S rating, and you can go someplace else to teach you this system. How's that? And if I refuse to resign? Well, then I'll give you a U rating, replace your position with somebody else, and um, you won't be able to teach at another school. You'll be just subbing here, there, and everywhere. Oh, hey, what's the matter, Mr. Solomon? Uh, just experienced something that made me a little angry. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, today, we're going to be reading aloud. We'll go in our normal order. Each one of you will pass the standardized test, I'm telling you. You will pass it. All right, let's get to work. Naomi's plight, the story of a Harlem family. A year later, despite Naomi's plan, she and Brandon had their first child, whom they named Marie. The misfortunes began about a year ago when Brandon lost his job. Brandon also began to take his frustrations out on his children. Marie told her mother that she was uncomfortable where her father was hugging her. With the little bit of money which she had saved. Whenever she complained about the conditions to the landlord, her neighbor asked her to help him organize a tenants association. Naomi received a phone call from the local police precinct. According to Stephen, the police officers then took out their billy clubs and used them to push the boys into an alley. Naomi's 15-year-old daughter Maria started acting up. Naomi's best friend Paula suggested that Naomi start resolving some of her family problems by utilizing the legal system. Not one mistake. Not one. I'm very proud of you guys, each and every one of you. It's great. It's great. I told you to watch that woman. <laughs> She's out to get you. Hey, make sure you tell the union rep. And your paperwork must be in order. If it gets to arbitration, the paperwork is the only thing that's gonna count. Oh, or else you'll really get screwed. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Well, if you want to keep your job, you better worry. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you got some other way to make a living. <laughs> Listen, don't wait till the moment she's trying to get rid of you. Grieve with the principal now. Mm -mm. They did what? Uh, uh, no, I will be there first thing in the morning. All right, don't worry about it, son. Okay, yeah, I'll take care of that tomorrow. Anita Sawyer from the district office is here to see you. About what? I don't know. Send her in. Yes, I'll give you a call later. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brown, good morning. Would you please call your assistant principal Gentry and I need to speak to you both. Is there a problem? Yes. Ms. Gentry, would you come into the office, please? Can I get you a bottle of water? No, thank you. What warrants this visit, Mrs. Sawyer? Mr. Solomon, the alternative school's reading teacher. Good morning. Mrs. Sawyer, what are you doing here? She's here concerning Mr. Solomon. Oh, I'm glad, because he is obnoxious. Doesn't belong anywhere near a classroom, especially with the students we have upstairs. Is that right? Well, I spoke with Mr. Solomon, 
And he tells me that you told him he's not equipped to teach the students he was hired to teach. So do you have any test scores, any parent complaints, any official observation reports? As a matter of fact, he should have been observed twice by now. And by you, Miss Gentry, Mr. Brown, do you have any of the elements of evaluation that I just recited? Well, as you know, Miss Gentry handles that floor, the alternative school. Miss Gentry. I haven't had a chance to observe him yet. Six months into the school year and you haven't observed him? Do you realize your negligence is in violation of your job duty, Miss Gentry? In defense of Miss Gentry, the class is new to our school and, and there's so much bureaucracy from the district office and downtown that it can get very confusing. Bullshit. You have no test scores, no parent complaints, no official observation reports, nothing. How the hell do you know what he is doing? Ms. Gentry? The students tell me. The students tell you. Well, did they also tell you that they can read now that Mr. Solomon has taught them? The standardized test scores will determine that. I see. And if they pass every single one of them, what would you say then? I will say absolutely nothing, because that is impossible. Well, let me see now. The curriculum states Silent reading first period, teaching reading second period. Now how the hell are they supposed to read silently when they can't read? If Mr. Solomon sees some loophole in the instructions given by some committee from Princeton or Harvard who don't know a damn thing about this community or these students, and he's getting results, why do you want to prohibit him from doing it? And to threaten him and con him into resigning with an S rating that's appalling, sir. Mrs. Sawyer, I will have you know he called me a racist. Well, maybe you are. I am not a racist. You mentioned the word, I didn't. And this visit isn't about race, it's about education. Principal Brown, Assistant Principal Gentry, this is the bottom line. If I hear of any more threats, being from the district and a part of the bureaucracy, as you say, Mr. Brown. I will see to it personally that you, Ms. Gentry, are out of your position of assistant principal and back in the classrooms teaching the types of students that Mr. Solomon is teaching right now. You, Mr. Brown, you're going to have five more classes just like Mr. Solomon's to deal with next year. I suggest you observe him with the students. Stop worrying about the test scores. I know you're looking out for your own butts. You want favorable numbers to represent the schools, but you can't go around threatening the teachers. They're on the front line, battling so many negatives just to teach our children. Enjoy the rest of your day. Who does she think she is coming in here talking to us like that? I will not observe the foolishness that he's teaching. And those students will not pass that test. I mean, I expect that from the union, not the district. Well, don't worry, you know, he's so confident that the class will pass. When he fails, he'll resign himself. I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you guys. I mean, a real talk. The people at the top think you're going to fail this test. There is no way you're supposed to pass it. But I want to tell you something, and you've got to believe it. Each and every one of you can do it. But I need you to do two things. The first of which is keep going on the reading program we've set up for ourselves. And the second is don't resist the sample test that we're going to be taking from here on out. OK? So you saw them? Yes, I saw two of them coming out of my house. They got jewelry, watches. I don't, I don't know what else they got. No. How's school going? Busy. But you know, it's that time of the year I get all the tears and complaints, students that didn't get accepted into the school of their choice. Mm -hmm. mm. They come crying to us guidance counselors, expecting us to make miracles. I know. All that fooling around and caught up with them. <laughs> we tell them the minute they come into our school in the seventh grade, that the seventh grade is the most important time. Because when they reach the eighth grade, they'll be applying for high school mm -hmm. in the fall. Mm -hmm. They won't see their eighth grade scores, so they'll be judging them from their seventh grade scores. 
and it never fails. The parents come in with their complaints. You know what I tell them? I tell them straight up. First of all, where have you been all year? <laughs> they, they don't come to the PTA meeting. Kevin, hmm. we have a thousand students enrolled at our school. And guess how many parents? Eight no. are in the PTA. No. Yes. Now the eight of them, <laughs> they're fighting about who's going to be the president. Mm -hmm. Tell you, people can blame the school system and the educators, but it's the parents. Mm -hmm. It starts with the parents. They're the ones sending these unprepared students out of their house to us. And not only do they expect us to teach them, but they want us to raise You're their raise children to, too. I know it. I <laughs> Just know like it. these two idiots we're looking for now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could go on and on. Yeah, well, doesn't mm -hmm. look like we're gonna get any action tonight. It's kind of quiet. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, girl. Come on, <laughs> I'll take you. Out. They're in the house. They're in the house. They're in the kitchen. Well, they're in there. Let's wait for them to come out. And this time, Ubala, don't let them get away. Stay out of here. Drop your weapon now! You drop your weapon or we choke this motherfucker to death right now! Don't do it! Okay. No! Hey, yes! Okay. Now you let him go. I said, let him go. Solomon? Is that you? You're through, Diggs. Jamar dropped that gun. Jamar? How does he know your name? That's my teacher. Your teacher, that's my fucking parole officer. Shoot his ass! No, don't listen to him, Jamar. You'll only make it worse. You know the law. You know there's nothing worse than murder. Remember, we learned that. Hey, Jamar, you shoot this motherfucker right now, I'm gonna take that gun and shoot you. Why ruin his life, Diggs? You know you're going down after this. Fuck you, white boy. I ain't going back to jail. This time I'm going down blazing. Now, Jamar, the last time, don't shoot, don't shoot, shoot this Diane. motherfucker right Jamar. now. Don't listen to him, Jamar. Shoot him. Drop the gun. Oh, fuck. Get off of me. Fuck you, Solomon. Dang, go call 911. What about the rest of them? Get away. There's only one. This one. What the hell are you talking about? There are four of them. Dad, I'll explain it later. One night that I am glad Lisa talked my ear off. I'd have been caught right in the middle of that mess. Yeah, you got that right. Jeff, I can't believe those were your students. Jeff, don't you think you should have them arrested? These are some serious crimes. You're right. You're right. But you know how the feds cut deals with known murderers to catch other ones? Yeah. This is my deal. I think it's best to keep it that way. Okay, good. Cool. Our lips are sealed. All right. But now what about that older guy, the guy that I got? You should see me, baby. I got his butt. Did not tell him. He was like lightning. Did you see me? I saw you. No. I, I didn't want to see you. you. Got me around the neck. I want his ass. Yeah, we got it. Okay. We got it. Thanks to you. Like, don't go doing that I told, again. But I told you, I told you that we were going to be able to get him, man. You won't never listen to me. Yeah, we got it, but I, I don't want to endanger you again. Yeah, well, like endanger, that. endanger. Oh. You better worry, worry about it, them. This is Superman, Starsky, and Hutch. <laughs> we got to keep you. You're not as young as you used to be. What you talking about? I still I mean, got ah, you, boy. Hey, I still got you. Look out. But I'm going to show you how to do it. Who's your nephew? Jamal. You're not corrupting him, are you? Nah, nah man. I'm a 
cops and the drug dealer. Mine too. What else me up? Everybody else gonna do. I got a grind. You want a pink slip? Hey, yo, can I use the bathroom? No, you may not. People put it in the book. I want to leave that saying shook. Truth is, we won't look. My mom's and pops is in rehab. Yeah. Mine's too. My mom's smoking crack. I live more foster parents. You know, it's like five of us. They be acting like they hate us and shit. Excuse me. But, um, yeah, but what it is what it is. They just want us for the check. I live with my grandparents. My mom's died. My father doesn't come around. We've been reading material you can relate to, and now I want to give you a different book. It's a city story. It's not your hood. Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. And Africa's Gift to America by J.A. Rogers. Why come? Why this? Why that? Why not? Just ask why. It's better than believing a lie or settling when it ain't right. Good morning, class. I will call out your name along with your scores. And as you know, score of two will promote you to the next grade. Lahab Mullins. To help quell her mother's concern about the new living, living arrangements, Naomi reassured her that. Two. Jermaine Murray. Civil action is a lawsuit brought to enforce, redress, or protect private rights. Two. Quincy Ross. D. Field. Three. Anthony Trailer. Violation is an act which is against the law. Three. Lee Taylor. Did a son not beg to what? Two. This book contains stories about the streets. I want you to read it because I feel like you can relate to these stories. I got that book. So do I. Man, so do I. Trevani. In addition to the inside conditions of the apartment. Three. Russell Banks. Prosecutor is the lawyer that brings against criminal action against the defendant. Two. Bo Scott. The only thing I'm going to take out of my pocket is a mint, because your breath is kicking. Two. Elijah Reynolds. Uh, I'll take now for 200, Pat. Um, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's a person. It's a person. Three. Shamel James, two. My pops is in jail. Oh, well, I'm very sorry to hear that. But you know it has absolutely nothing to do with you, right? Mr. Solomon be teaching us that. Yeah, he hit us in the head with that every day. <laughs> Word. Darius Nelson, two. What about Jamar Rhodes? <laughs> Jamar Rhodes? I don't see him. Well, he's got to be on there right now for a fact. He took the test. The only other list is for those students who got a four. Check it. Maria would always miss her 10 p.m. curfew, usually coming home around 2 a.m. Jamal Rhodes. Congratulations, you got a four. Yeah! There is nothing, nothing you lack. All you can hold you back. If there's something you must achieve, you can do. Oh, hi, Mr. Solomon. Um, Mr. Brown is waiting for you. So your innovative methods worked. The kids did all the work. They just needed somebody to believe in. And they got you. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Mr. Solomon, apologies are in order. I'm sorry. It's all forgotten. Congratulations. Uh, we welcome you to come back and teach next year and every year. What do you say? 
I'll think about it. Yo, Mr. Solomon, can we talk to you for a second? Sure, Jamar, what do you need? Yeah, we, we just wanted to thank you for letting us go that night. Right. My uncle made us do those robberies. Yeah. Plus, we ain't tell nobody that you five old now. I feel you, but, uh, you know, I didn't see anything that night. You feel me? Bird. You got you. Man. Yeah. I think I like him, son. All right. Cool, kid. Congratulations, my friend. Did a hell of a job. You know what? You may want to consider um, teaching full time and dropping this job. You can't. It's got to do both. Hey, he's a public servant. It's his life's work. Come on, we're going to be late for sure. Mm, in that case, I got three more cases for you to cover. Can you read? Excuse us, please. Mm. Hey, you know, Dick's tell me that you, um, let three of your kids go. Get away. Hey, they get away, you know? There's a little something for you to atone for doing seven. That's public service. If you're